It is a privilege today to be joined on the summit by David Tewksbury, who is the sports director for Hub City Radio in Aberdeen, South Dakota. And David, I know we have a lot to talk about. It's college football preview time, which is one of the reasons I want to, to get you on here and talk really, really quickly. But it's also summertime. And what does this mean for you? I mean, you, you're the sports director. You have any number of directions you can go with what you're doing during the summer. What are you doing right now? Yeah, it's kind of the doldrums a little bit. So to a certain degree, right? I mean, it's kind of that time of the year where things are kind of slowing down a little bit. But, you know, we were kind of talking off the air a little bit for us broadcasters and play by play guys. It's kind of that time of year where we're starting to kind of get things just slowly but surely getting ready for for late August and September because it'll be here before you know it. And I mean, I've been doing play by play for over a decade now. And it's kind of a situation where Ah, you kind of take a deep breath and you're like, okay, summertime is here, but you're going to blink your eyes and it's going to be mid August. And you're thinking to yourself, I had all that downtime. Why didn't I get prepared for the, uh, for the fall here? So I'm not making that same mistake. I did that way back in the day, maybe, I don't know, seven, eight years ago. So it's kind of that time where you're starting to slowly ramp up and just kind of get ready for, uh, for preparation for teams and what have you. Put your skeletons together for your spotting boards and, and, and got that going or in the works. That's that's kind of the next game plan. I'm actually what I'm going to do is kind of send out a bunch of questionnaires to the local student athletes here that I'm going to be covering for uh, for Northern State University. So I'll be sending that out here in the next probably couple of weeks and that to the coaches and then just slowly kind of work on that. And, you know, kind of working in all of my little interesting factoids and stories about the players throughout our broadcast. So uh, I, I can't wait. It's going to be an absolute blast. Well, I like how you're repping already. I, I appreciate yeah. the swag and, and uh, already repping. We'll get to that in just a moment. Let's talk yeah. about some other college really quickly. The, like one the past college, and the future. Yeah, let's uh, let's go to the past first because a Presentation College in Aberdeen is one of a handful of universities, colleges that are shutting their doors in 2023. And things that were announced, uh, I mean, a couple of them announced in January, February, uh, even as late as March and April talking yeah. about shutting things down. And presentation is one of those. So you covered the Saints athletics for a while. Uh, talk about what it means then for the community that um, a college, uh, uh, an institute of higher education, and for athletics, what does this mean for the community? I think it's a big deal. I, I think we're going to have to wait and see what it really is going to mean in the next handful of years. But presentation has really been mo mainly kind of a nursing school. And obviously, there's a bunch of student athletes that are into nursing. And I think one of the biggest things about presentation is the fact that it has such an impact on the community of former student athletes that remain in the community after graduation, whether that's to be a teacher, work at Avera or Sanford or something like that, a couple of the local hospitals, or just working at the post office or working as a lawyer or doing whatever that is, working at Walmart, Target, what have you, local um, grocery stores, those sorts of things. So I think with the fact that the school is closing down, it's really gut-wrenching for me. Um, when that word came out, I believe it was January 17th that the school was going to be closing down. I mean, it, it felt like, you know, you lost your best friend, you know, you lost your puppy or something like that. It's just really, really tough to deal with. And reaching out to all the coaches and the players and everyone was just kind of in a daze. They just couldn't believe it. And the good news is, though, even with the school closing down, you're seeing a lot of the student athletes land on their feet at other places, other institutions. A lot of teachers, I'm sure, are going to land on their feet, higher, uh, higher ed, that sort of thing. Coaches are going all over the place. Some coaches are going to the D2 ranks, which is really, really great to see, and I'm really, really happy for them. So the school may be closing down, but I think it really kind of lives on with their legacy of where they're going, be it NAIA, NCAA, D3, D1, what have you. But uh, from an impact, of, uh, from a community perspective it, it really is a, it's a kick in the gut for sure i i completely understand that and i have seen some of the names of of some of the coaching staff that have been able to as you mentioned land on their feet and and find different opportunities there so i'm excited for all of them and i hope that it works out for for everyone involved I, covering the sport there and being a, a person who is the voice of mm -hmm. uh, a particular product you had an opportunity to do that with saints football for quite a while and uh, one of the things that caught my attention was something you posted recently, an ode to Presentation Saints football, and you listed a number of the highlights that have happened in your time there and in, in, in watching Presentation play on the field and different uh, clips, audio clips of the calls that you made. It was so fun to listen to and, oh, and get to hear that. I didn't know any of those names. They were new to me, 
but I felt like I was getting to know them as I was listening to you make the call and, and gave brief synopses of, of the games so that we got a feel of what we were going to get to hear along the way. By the way, the link to that is in the description. So if you'd like to, to watch or listen to a presentation or an ode to presentation Saints football, you can click on that link and go there. Talk about what uh, went into that and, and just looking back like you did. Yeah, I, I thought, you know, this would be a great way to kind of move on to my next sort of role, and that's still remaining here in Aberdeen as the voice for Northern State. But I have this expression, it's ever onward, always forward, and never backward. And then I went back a little bit and looked at some of the, those former memories and what have you, and I just kind of thought that this would be my way of putting that to bed and kind of moving on to the to the future. But I will say I would like to do another one of those for volleyball and men's and women's basketball. Now, full disclosure, we're doing this on a Tuesday. My wife is scheduled to give birth on Friday. I don't know if I'm going to have the time to do that in the future. And, of course, getting ready for the new seasons with Northern State, we'll have to wait and see. I would like to do that at some point in time, but it, it was just a situation where I was sitting down and I thought to myself, what can I do to kind of look back and just kind of honor some of these great memories? Because five, ten years from now, I don't think – there's going to be a whole lot of people thinking about presentation college football because, of course, that's that's the world we live in nowadays. Is mm -hmm. Everything's going by so fast. you got that 24-7 news cycle. But uh, just kind of sitting down, and I, I joked with my buddies, and I said, this is probably the longest thing that I've written since college or something <laughs> like that. And it was such a blast putting it together because I was going back and thinking about certain plays and certain moments and you know, there was one of the moments that I was talking about with the presentation college and Waldorf game where it was back and forth and back and forth and a player got hurt for Waldorf. And when this play happened, I wrote in the article, I wrote in the piece that it just felt like time stood still and the game stopped forever. And then all of a sudden in this very highly contentious game, you get one of the student athletes from the presentation college perspective, Dylan Paulson, great wide receiver, great hands. But he talked a little bit of junk from time to time, too. He's a great kid. But he took his helmet off, and he started running to the Waldorf sideline when a player's down. And I'm thinking to myself, what's going to happen here? I have no idea. And then he just gets down on a knee and starts a prayer circle. And I thought that was the most magnificent thing I've ever seen from a play-by-play -play perspective. And even when I was typing up the story, I, I was getting emotional about it. I, I even wrote it in the story. I said, I'm, I'm feeling a tear welling up. And my left eye. And I just, I thought that was the most magnificent thing. And I texted Dylan when I was writing the article and he said, I remember that exact play. I remember exactly what I was thinking. And it was just one of those moments that I think only a saint could do. And it was just so emotional, so cool. But um, it's, it's a no to presentation football. I gave that program everything I had. I mean, you know, broadcasting and broadcasters, people will love you or they'll hate you. They may not, they might not love everything you have to say all the time, but I love those student athletes. I love those coaches. I love the family members and everything else like that. They might not have been crazy about everything I said all the time, but but I couldn't care less. I still care about them so much, and uh, that school will always mean something to me, 100%. We are visiting now with David Tewksbury here on The Summit on Midwest Sportsnet. I encourage you, please, to subscribe to the channel. We talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. And it is worth the read. It is worth a listen. So I encourage you to click on that link and, and go visit uh, an ode to Presentation Saints football. I hope you get the time to do what you want to regarding basketball and, and volleyball. Uh, with five children, I can tell you that time, as you know it, is, is no longer going to be the same here in just a few days. So right. uh, heads up on that. So I, I've been told. Yes, and, and it is true. It, uh, it definitely is true. Being the voice of, that's, that's a cool thing. I've had an opportunity in, in, in my time in broadcasting to do it on the Division II level, to get to do it on the high school level and in more than one place, more than one state. And mm -hmm. it really is something. You, you mentioned it briefly, but talk about doing that and, and the fact that you're going to be continuing to do that as well, along with being a sports director. Yeah, I think the relationships are the biggest thing. You know, relationships endure. I mean, I still talk with the former coaches that are all over the country right now. I actually had breakfast with a coach that went to Rockford a couple of weeks ago. He was here in town with his family and his son about two or three weeks ago now. And we sat down for breakfast and we were just reminiscing about everything and just all of those memories that we've had. And I 
I gave that program and all those programs, everything I had. And I think a lot of those student athletes gave a lot to me too. I, I ended up standing up for the middle linebackers wedding. I was one of his groomsmen back in 20, 2018, in August of 2018. So, you know, yeah, I'm a broadcaster. I love calling play by play, but the relationships that I make with these men and women is something that I think is, it, it, you don't get that opportunity. And also it kind of keeps you young a little bit too. You know, you're around young people and, you know, you're, uh, you know, catching up on all the, the new hip lingo like bat and, you know, whatever. I just, there's a lot of these like new like lingo terms. I'm just like, uh, I don't know if I know about that one, but it, it just, it keeps you young, but um, there's just something about the student athlete and seeing them grow and, and, you know, freshman year, they kind of come in and a lot of times they're afraid of their own shadow. They don't want to talk to the media. If you want to call me the media, but uh, they just don't really, they're not very open. Then the time you see them graduate as a senior, man, they're there. You can just see them blossom. And it's, there's something special about seeing that maturation process from a young man or young woman to just become uh, a, a new member of society and, a teacher or a scientist or maybe an astronaut or, or a lawyer. It doesn't really matter whatever you do, but you can just see that maturation process slowly but surely. And it's just it's just so cool. I think it's fantastic. Well, you move from, from one situation just almost seamlessly, it feels like, into the next one. And just right there in town, uh, moving over to be the voice of the Northern State Wolves, a Division II program. Uh, talk about that a little bit because I, I think that is just incredible the way – that that has opened up from one right on into the next. It's just, it's a, again, it seems like a seamless flow. Yeah, we were talking off the air a little bit about God's timing, and it 100% is God's timing because when January 17th hit and school closes, my wife and I are looking at each other like, well, what does this mean for you and your play-by-play? -play? That's where your heart is. You love calling play-by-play. -play. And you know, my boss immediately said, you know, well, you can still do play-by-play -play for one of the local high schools and that sort of thing. And um, that's, that was great. And that was an immediate blessing for sure too. But, you know, there's something about college athletics and there's something about getting to know these student athletes at a deeper level. And the way it happened was just absolutely incredible. You know, presentations closing down, but, um, the, the former voice for Northern state, Ben Root, you know, did a great job for a long time and I wish him nothing but the best. He's down in the uh, Omaha area and I wish him Godspeed. But, um, I just feel like I'm ready for this next step as well from the D2 perspective NAIA is great. Nothing wrong with that. But, you know, you get a little bit more eyes, you get a little bit more listenership from the D2 side of things. And if I'm being honest, Aberdeen and Northern State are like they're like uh, peanut butter and jelly. I mean, the, the incredible performance from these student athletes is definitely recognized by the uh, by the community here. It's it's a northern town. People love Northern State. They bleed maroon and gold. And I'm ready to believe that, too. I'm ready to show these uh, these families and and friends and Northern State, you know, uh, you know, university sort of, uh, you know, nation, if you will, how much work I'm going to put into these broadcasts. And they're going to get to know so much about these student athletes rather than, oh, yeah, Ian Marshall's a good football player. But you're going to get to know about Ian Marshall this year from a from a perspective of something maybe you never knew, maybe that I never knew. And I can't wait for that journey. Well, that sounds like fun. And I, I'm going to tune in. I'm going to listen. I want to be able to hear this too, because I, I, I appreciate what you are bringing to the table, David. And, and even in, as in looking to what you're doing, you know, you, you, you brought scripture to the table and, and talking mm -hmm. about God's timing and Psalm 37, four, which stands out to me, delight yourself in the Lord. He'll give you the desires of your heart. I think that is incredibly cool and just a, a fantastic way of looking at it. And I think the folks who listen to your broadcast are going to be blessed as well. So in the meantime, though, and uh, we, we may have to shut this down quickly because I know your wife is, is pregnant. You mentioned we want to make sure everything's going smoothly and, and we don't have to cut this short. But uh, you, you're going to have a child come into the world officially then very, very soon. In the meantime, though, with your summer, if you're not uh, you know, writing the volleyball stuff or the volleyball things to, to look back, uh, what's the rest of the summer look like then for you? And, and we talked about that briefly, but where can they find you? Where can the folks find you if they want to listen to you on the air? Yeah, I think the biggest place for me is I'm pretty active on Twitter. I'd like to think for the most part, I'm at David Tewksbury. You can follow me there if you'd like. Um, I'm at Hub City Radio as well. I do a morning show on a top 40 station on 106.7 point FM. So I'll be kind of that uh, that DJ, if you will. I don't like the term DJ. There's no such thing as discs anymore. There's no there's no jockeying of discs. I'm an on-air personality. So uh, hopefully you can hear that a little bit as well. Um, so I'm on that as well in the morning. I usually get in every day around 5.30 a.m. So you talk about having a kid and, you know, not going to sleep and everything else like that. 
I'm pretty much used to that. So I think I'll be okay in that perspective. But I also host a uh, morning sports talk show as well on Fox Sports, Aberdeen, 1420 AM. It's a, it's a show called The Sports Hub. We'll talk a lot of local athletics, high school, college, maybe some pro stuff as well, but it, we like to keep it as local as possible. So right now, as of right now on uh, June the 6th, I'm flying solo on that show. So it's kind of uh, that time of the year where there's not a whole lot going on, but we can have great conversations and kind of drum up some excitement for what's to come and what have you. And then I also host a country shift as well from noon till six on Pheasant Country 103. You can find all of that at hubcityradio.com. So definitely keeps me busy. I'm a play-by-play guy at heart, but there's a lot of other stuff that I do too. Well, I, I, that's that's quite a bit. That's enough to keep you busy yeah. for sure. I, you know, I, I, I've done some of this in, in my time and I'm old enough to remember the discs and I, I went to, to stations with, uh, with albums and things along those lines. When I started doing some of the things, I've, I've done my share of voice tracking and, and on air yep. too, but you know, hopefully you, you get a little bit more. My wife was telling me, I put down on air personality and she said, don't you think you should have a personality? You're gonna write that down. But anyway, I don't know if you, she loves me. I'm just kidding. But we want to, we want to keep following you, David, so we can find you hub city radio among other things. And we'll have the link to that in the description as well. Thanks so much for taking time with us today. We look back on presentation. We're looking ahead to Northern state and, uh, the Wolves football season, especially as uh, we're getting ready for that right now. And hopefully uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that in the future. Thank you so much, sir, for taking time with us today here on the summit. Amen. God bless. I'm here anytime.